Uh, Mark, appreciate your time. Let me ask you. Your former mentor was, I think, uh, famous as a coach for, in his darkest moments, trying to find a positive. What can you find positive out of uh, what clearly is your darkest moment, I think, as a coach? Well, the positive is that we're playing competitive football and we're not getting wiped off the park. Having said that, six of our seven games have been right in the game until mm. late in the game. So it's something we need to address quickly. So do you factor in coaching, fitness, attitude, character? What do you, where, do you, where do you put your finger on it? There's a couple of those things that you mentioned there that we need to... Uh, we'll go through a review this week of all areas mm. and we'll come to a conclusion on that. Mark, what does sort of that mean? Sort out players and how they handle pressure. Mm. But, but we've seen the last two weeks that they didn't handle it very well at all, did they? Oh, I think that um, the way we played against Geelong was um, sensational, I thought, for, for the majority of the game. And at the moment we've got six out of our top ten players out of the side, but no one speaks about that much. And that can be very hard when you introduce younger players in your team. And they, sometimes the game has got that willing in, in fitness that sometimes they can be telling. But you were the best part of nine goals up with those, even not, notwithstanding the fact that you've got blokes out, the blokes that you had got your nine goals in front yesterday. Yeah, that's right. And then we lost McFarlane, who was on top of Robinson. And then we had to restructure our whole back line. And on the back of that, we lost Hayden and, and Grover the week before. And all of a sudden, we've got a lot of younger players down there that, in the end, just couldn't handle the, the, the pressure that Melbourne were applying to them. They say it's just a game, but you've woken up today mm -hmm. with what must have been a gut-wrenching feeling. Yeah. What do you do? You've got to get on with life. What do you do? Oh, I've always been taught to be positive and move on, push on. And, you know, a lot of everyone at the club looks up to you, so you've got to be strong. Mark, the, uh, the Dockers have the worst record in the last three years for reports and suspensions. Hasn't been too bad this year. Josh Carr mm. has played 71 games for the Dockers, mm. and there's been eight reports. Josh Carr mm. knees Ablett a week ago, you know that the Geelong players rally for Ablett whenever he's touched. Mm. They rally for Ablett, they knock you off. A game you should never have been beaten in when you had such a decisive lead. Mm. Josh Carr gets suspended. We saw the game yesterday. If Josh Carr plays yesterday mm. in your midfield and he plays anywhere near what he's capable of doing, you don't lose that game. Josh Carr, to a large extent, through suspension, mm. has cost you eight points in the last two weeks. But your club has had more suspensions than, than anyone in the last two or three years. Mm. Who, who talks to the players? Who pulls Carr aside? Who tells them that you are hurting no, our I football do. club? I do. And what happened to Josh in that particular game last week was a reaction from some of the punishment that he actually had received and but, been on but, the end of. But all players get that. All players get that. I understand that. He's, he's part of our leadership group and the most important part about the addressing of that was that when he did it, that's when Geelong got momentum. So um, Josh has been spoken to and, and what we didn't know going into the game was that, uh, you know, there was a camera on Ablett the whole time. And I'm not trying to find excuses for Josh. He understands that football's changed and he's got to change his ways quickly. You uh, seem to be almost a career assistant coach, almost mm -hmm. 10 years as the number two, what is the major difference between being the vice captain and being in the hot seat? Well, the major difference is that you you just go from working in a zone and the area of the ground to to all over, and and that's dealing with players, the, their their families, um, you know, the medical staff, uh, it's the members, the, the sponsors. Uh, it's just an enormous workload. Is it overpowering? No, it's just, it's just challenging to, to fight through all those situations and to be able to deal with that on a day-to-day -day basis. Has the results this season shaken any of your personal confidence in getting the job done? No, no, it's just, it's just more and more challenging for me. I mean, there's a lot of disappointment, obviously, on yep. the back of what's happened in the first seven rounds, but at, at, the, at the end of the day, I think you'll find that we'll learn a lot from... I'll learn a lot, I've learned a lot, hell of a lot, in six months of being a senior coach. And... I think you'll see in the very near future Fremantle turn it around quickly. Is time running away from Fremantle? Uh, looked like it could have been going somewhere a couple of years ago. The oldest list in the competition. Yeah, well, I inherit that list, Robert. 
you inherited the list, but you yeah. took Mark Johnson yeah, that was at, 30, at 30 years of age. He turns 30 in a week or two. Mm. Why would you go after Tarrant with the problems that he's had at Collingwood? Why would you go after Solomon? I think Solomon's been handy for I you. I don't make those decisions. I never made those decisions. Well, Johnson you've, would have been your decision. Johnson, yeah, he was. Johnson yeah, has yeah, to yeah, be yeah, your decision. Yeah. Um, Sean McManus has been a great servant of the club, mm. in my opinion, and we're all allow allowed to have opinion. He's he should, a warrior, yeah. Yeah, but he should have been out of the team. He should have been given the gold watch two years ago. And I just look at your team, mm. and I think that you know there's older players, ageing players. You let Bell go and live hundreds of kilometres away from Fremantle. He's back now. I know he's back, but... You think he's playing well? It doesn't matter whether he's playing well or not. You are compromising your footy club. You're either in or you're out. It's 100% in or out at professional AFL level in 2008. And I just see your club as just not being strong enough. That, you know, the tail mm. wags the dog for too long there. And, you know, Tarrant yesterday, 11 touches in the first half when everything's fine. Mm. He gets one touch in the second half. The supply was cut off significantly. I mean, Melbourne just overran us. Mark, was that the second half? Was, Peter, Peter Bell was contracted to play this year. Was it his decision or your decision for him to come back and live in Perth? No, that was his decision. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And were you were you happy with it? What with with, him with living with, there? with the Bell situation when he said you lent on him to play? Did you not at the start of the season? Peter yeah, Bell? I spoke. No, at the end of last year, I spoke okay. to him about his football and where I thought he it says was my career is going to take me to Geraldton. Yeah. You then said, I well, spoke to him about the game that he loved and whether he thought that he was on decline and made him realise and understand what football's done for him and that at his age I didn't see any sign of that and in fact I saw James Hurd and these sort of guys go through very similar pros at the end of their careers and as it's turned out he's probably been in our top four players in most weeks. I know okay. look they're difficult to sign yeah, yeah they are but I mean do you think when you raised that Terence got a problem and then you, you raised the Josh Carr issue and then people legitimately in my view Ask you what is it? Let's let's alert the world to what's happening on that front. Chris Tarrant had a personal problem on top of his injury. Now his injury was to his neck, and so he was having a lot of problems with that. And I didn't want to discuss that in the public domain. Okay, and you still and you can't and share the personal that with us problem. Now? No, 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 not at all. I won't. No. And what about the Josh Carr situation? You introduced that into the debate. Yeah, I don't want to be seen to be putting players in on the football ground. But but, but the point you did raise it. You said. Things were happening to one of your players. Yeah, I think we've got some guys that are victimised. Victimised by the umpires? I can't say that. What does the Fremantle Football Club stand for, Mark? It's what it wants to stand for. Well, what what does it stand for? Because I've watched the Fremantle Football Club mm. since they came in. I've got no idea what they stand for. A successful club that has culture. Is that what you want it to stand for? I've got to, I've got to develop that's your goal. That. Yeah. And how are you going to go about doing that? Every week I learn something about the football club. Not just personnel and players, mm. everything. You've got over 40,000 members, which is a fantastic start. It is. It is a fantastic start. 43,000 members. And you know what? Oh, and the players appreciate it and so do the coaches because it just takes some added pressure off the, the whole group. Are the supporters, are the members demanding of you? They are. And if you live in a two-team town, Robert, You'll understand, yeah, they are. Because the whole focus is on both teams every week, every individual player, every day. And um, that can be telling. Matt, can I ask you about the, the Essendon influence at your footy club? Mm -hmm. Harvey, Shaw, Wallace, Pryor, Solomon, Johnson, mm -hmm. Kepler-Bradley. Um, do you need, I mean, I'm not talking on the field now, but do you need some sort of local people who you respect, whose intellect you respect, to be part of that group? And have you gone for too many players from a club that's down the bottom anyway? Well, you know, on top of that, we've got Steve Laxos, who's uh, on the coaching staff, Chris Scott, Chris Bond. Um, yeah, you have a little, most clubs that people will surround themselves with, um, people that they've had an involvement with before. If you have a look at Hawthorne, for instance, Alison Clarkson, Stuart Dew, those sort of guys, and fitness guy Andrew Russell's from Port Adelaide. So that, you know, that happens regularly. I, th I think you'll find that that's not, just not us, if you know what I mean, having six or seven Essendon guys at the club. Mark, I want you to... I am pretty... I, I, like to, I do like to bring successful people to Fremantle Football Club, though. And that's, hence, you know, Chris Scott knows... Well, thanks for your company tonight. Thanks, Lord. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Mark. Mark